Welcome to Monday Markers with Charlie. This is our 12th program, and I'll be talking today about a marker for the uh, founding of the Iron Workers International Union that was in Pittsburgh in 1896. Um, the amalgamated, well, the Amalgamated Association of Iron and Steel uh, Workers had suffered a terrible defeat at Homestead in 1892. The iron workers who erected structural steel and built buildings, often even in the mills where the union had been suppressed, um, iron, iron workers did not work in a specific location usually, but moved from large project to large project. And it was their ability to work with large structural uh, shapes and uh, various fabricated uh, ironwork and put them together to be able to read blueprints, put those beams and uh, shapes uh, together uh, by bolting, riveting, and welding. Uh, they had a very unique uh, skill that had a lot of danger involved in its execution. Uh, structural steel beams uh, became very important in terms of changing the complete landscape of the city, especially hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the development of the elevator because uh, having uh, buildings more than five or six stories became possible so that skyscrapers, uh, very tall buildings, um, were erected and uh, also uh, inventions like John Roebling of Saxonburg's uh, invention of braided steel cable made it possible for suspension bridges to span large rivers and but have large have high clearance and wide um, passageway underneath for very large ships. Um, Roebling suspension bridges were pioneered uh, on the Allegheny and Monongahela uh, and then were built in Cincinnati and other places, but most famously the Great Brooklyn Bridge that united uh, Brooklyn to Manhattan was built by Roebling. Uh, by the time that uh, a hundred story building was built, 102, the Empire State Building, in between uh, 19 1929 and 1931, uh, iron workers uh, erected the skeleton of that great building with steel from Homestead that was so efficiently moved by railroad that the beams were still warm from the rolling mills in the Mon Valley. Uh, this Empire State remained the tallest building in the world until it was replaced by the World Trade Center Towers uh, also constructed by iron workers of, with Homestead Steel in 1970. In 1903, Pittsburgh witnessed its worst construction accident when a high railroad bridge was being built by the Wabash Railroad connecting a tunnel through Mount Washington to a downtown railroad station of the Wabash near the location present in present days of the United Steelworkers. At the, as the central span was being extended over the Monongahela, it collapsed and it, onto passing coal barges, and it killed 10 iron workers and injured many more. A passerby described the scene. They fell through the air like flies, the men shrieking and yelling as they fell. The entire mass fell with a sickening thud on the barges beneath. One of the barges sunk immediately. Few of the men on the barges saw the mass that was falling on them. Hundreds of iron workers rushed from all over Pittsburgh to aid in the rescue. The Wabish Bridge supports can still be seen on both sides of the Monongahela. In the following year, 1904, the iron workers held their convention in Toronto, Canada. They were an international union and they declared and made safety the central concern of their union. Uh, iron workers, just like coal miners, uh, work in a difficult, dangerous trade. 
that demands a great deal of mutual trust and workplace solidarity. Uh, I remember filming uh, for the video Building Pittsburgh, which can be gotten on YouTube. Just Google Building Pittsburgh video and you'll get it. An interview with Red Collins, who was a tough but very kindly gentleman who was instrumental in the development of the union's uh, apprentice training uh, program and facility in the Strip District, which is now named for him. He emphasized uh, the key lesson of his understanding of the trade is that you never get through learning this trade. You are learning every day of your life. Iron workers tend to be feisty and colorful bunch. Union elections are often fiercely contested. One of the most enjoyable interviews I ever did was with uh, Nick Stepanovich, uh, who was the iron workers president, later Allegheny uh, Building Trades Council president. Uh, he was a huge, tough man with monster hands. Uh, and he did a great deal, organized an awful lot of volunteer work for churches, for the handicapped in particular, and he was a, an important figure for the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. He became, he said, a sort of a godfather for the black workers who had fought their way into the trades. He admired their willingness to fight like he had as a Serb, uh, after World War II, coming into a union of primarily Irish and Germans. He said about the black iron workers, they never quit. Minorities never had a shot in this world. No different than when the ethnic people came to this country. They had to fight for everything they earned. Iron workers provided leadership to the building of the lovely Vietnam Veterans Memorial on the North Shore of the Allegheny River, spearheaded by former iron worker T.J. McGarvey. It portrays both a black and a white soldier returning to their family. And it's all under a giant iron lotus flower, inverted lotus flower with the words, with words of peace and Vietnamese and English. T.J. felt strongly that Vietnam was such a blue-collar thing that it was so fitting that the working people of Western Pennsylvania built and created this monument and that most of the material and all of the labor was donated. ¶¶